it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Number one, knowledge is the new money. Get you some. Because it's this what's going to take you to the next level. You're a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. Because it's this what's going to take you to the next level. So when you, when next time you come to class, y'all got to do me a favor. The teacher's giving out English, like don't look at it, like, oh, it's homework. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As Jesus Christ has liberated us from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. You go in the classroom and the teacher's like, I got a math assignment, somebody come on the board and do this math assignment. I want swag. I want you to just like, I got it. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Oh, hi, everybody. Well, it's lovely to have you with us today um, on this service of Hope Restored. Uh, especially has a big, big hello to all of you out there that haven't joined us before. You're really welcome. And I hope you enjoy the service.
There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one born for our salvation. Jesus. There is a light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. There is freedom from the chains that bind us. Jesus.
I no longer fear. Today, I stand in front of you, reaching for the top. The terrain is rocky, the valleys are deep. I look upon the towering hills ahead. The fear of the unknown fills me. But I know you are here. You are with me. You have been with me from the beginning. Shaping me, sharpening me, sculpting me, and perfecting me. My confidence is no longer in my circumstances, but in the strength you give me. No matter what comes my way, I will no longer fear. This is what I was meant to do. This is who I was meant to become. Any pain I feel, any enemy I face, only makes me stronger to reach the top. My power flows from your presence. I will no longer be paralyzed by what was or worry about what will be. With you, I no longer fear. Happy Thursday, everybody. It's so lovely to have you with us. I'm Laura and this is my husband Thomas. We're here today just to give you a brief introduction about Hope Restored and also to give you a few not notifications about what's going on in HV58. We're so excited to have you with us. Please, if you'd like to find any more about our fellowship, what we do, how much laughter and how much fun we get up to, please go have a look on our website. It'd be great to see you there. Also, we are always looking for more people to join. So if you have anyone you think could benefit or anyone who's feeling lonely during this time to come along, it would be lovely to welcome them. Also get them to check out the website. i now pass you on to my husband for another little update, cheeky update. We've also got the YouTube page, uh, which Kevin Hussey is bashing out the um, weekly Bible studies. Um, yeah, in your spare time, if you look at that, it'd be great. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, just to let you know, when Boris allows, we are readily preparing to reopen the hub. How exciting it will be when a time comes when we can meet in person. Until then, don't worry, we'll continue to meet online virtually. We look forward to seeing you at the hub when it does open. Now for some worship and praise. Have a great week and remember, praise Jesus. Amen. <laughs>
Welcome to you all online. I've got a message for you. What does it look like to be ready? What does it look like to be in the place where God can use you? In Joshua 3, 4, we see this, this statement. Then you will know which way to go. You have never gone this way before. Do you know which way to go? At this present moment because if we do not know where we are to go it just brings us to a stagnation of daily living so the first thing to work out is where are we and are we comfortable or are we missing out on what God has for us I'd like to look at where these people were when this scripture was written and uh, They had just traveled from one camp and drawn near to the Jordan to another camp, ready to receive the new. But I want to take you back to where they were before. And they were in a place that was quite um, comfortable and uh, was really near some supplies that they needed. In actual fact, they were very near what we call the King's Highway, which was a major trading route of that day and still today is of really importance. And I just wanted to uh, link into three things that I believe are the hooks that keep us trapped into the old and the comfortable and that we can't and we don't get to see the new coming into our lives. You see, on that road, they had three Uh, major roads that went into it and the first one was from the south and this was the road from Egypt and Egypt's always represented power and oppression and how many uh, people today are looking for position are looking for authority are looking to to um, see that they are of importance And, you know, there's nothing wrong with having some of these things. But I do believe that if we if we go too far with them, they become hooks and we get trapped into them and we become entrapped in their power, in what's behind them. And then and then you you end up staying where you are. So an example of that is if you're in if you've uh, you know, maybe you're a manager or a uh, or a uh, businessman and you have accumulated some authority some power when it gets very difficult to move from that place because all you want to seek is more authority more power and so you feel comfortable where you are so you feel like you've achieved but i'm wondering whether god really wants that for us whether he wants us to have more freedom, that we understand what that power uh, and that authority that he has placed inside us really means. And then secondly, um, there was another road that came in and it came in from Babylon. And, you know, Babylon always represents in the Bible sort of materialism, consumerism, you know, look at what I have, uh, and, and in a world we live in today, wow, this is so evident. In actual fact, I think it's become the new religion of our age um, because people have become hooked into it. And again, this hook is very cunning and, and it makes you think about, you know, what do I have? Do I have what they, that, that somebody else has? Have I got the latest phone? Do, does my car look great? I need a new registry. All these things. Again, there's nothing wrong in having material wealth. But if you allow the power of that to seduce you and to keep you hooked in to its power, you will always stay in the place you are because you will feel comfortable with where you're at. And the third hook is coming from Assyria or what now Damascus and and down and that is of pride you know the third hook that really gets us and it's the oldest hook of all 
and that is pride. Look what I've done. Look how, look how this is happening. What's happening here? And look, look, at, look at what the result is of what I'm doing. You know, if you get carried away in there, in that, you end up being caught in its trap. So you see, we can be comfortable Christians and we can live in that camp. And in actual fact, you know, a couple of the tribes actually, after they went and helped Joshua, came back and lived there because that's what they wanted. And, you know, there we have a choice. We either can stay very comfortable and safe in the area of power, materialism and pride and let those hooks claw into us. Or we can, be, we can move to the new place. And, you know, Joshua and the Israelites moved from there to a place called uh, Shittim or Acacia Grove. And that place is a place where, where they stayed just for three days. But those three days were a place of transformation. And what I would like to ask you to think about tonight is what transformation are you willing to do in this new time? If you think about it, it's been a really um, turbulent time that we're living in at the moment. And I do believe we're all going through a transformation. You know, when we move forward, we will be in the right place. So what are we to do in the right place? Well, one of the things that it says in the scriptures, it says, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out for Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. My question to you is, are you equipped with the truth? Because it says in John 8.32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Are you sure you're listening and waiting for his timing? Because it's not about our position. It's about God's provision. It's not about us being satisfied. It's about our lives in purpose and promise over spilling into the life of others. If your past is holding you, you are being stopped from moving forward. So we need to listen and we need to seek him daily. Whilst we, we've been in lockdown, we've had the opportunity to realign ourselves to his purpose. In other words, we've, we've had this opportunity of getting closer to him, to listening to him. And, you know, if we're going to walk into the new, we need to do that. We need to spend more time just getting closer to each other, to praying together, to reading the scriptures together, to studying together. I always remember when I first became a Christian, I couldn't put the Bible down. And, you know, as you go on in your Christian faith, some of those, some of those first desires just drift away. But I, I, would, I would encourage you in this time, in this place that we are at this moment, to think about his word, to think about what does it mean to be a man or a woman of prayer? What does it mean to look at what God is doing in your life and to then move that out and then share it with others? Again, when you first become a Christian, you want to share it with the world. But as you get on and you know, get more wisdom about who, who you know, your relationship with Christ, you tend to be a little bit more reserved. But you know, I believe that God is getting you ready for your new. Is getting you ready for the new that is coming into your life at this moment. When I think about our journey. Uh, then in myself's journey and I think about how many times transition has been such an important role you know every time and we've been on a, we've been on a journey 
for over 20 years. And you know, God has chipped away. He's transformed us into who we are today. Now we can take what he's done and we can say, oh, that's nice and that feels great. Or we can take what he has done and say, God, use me. Send me. Send me out, Lord, and help me to fulfill the purpose that you created me to be. So, number one, are you in the right place? Number two, are you equipped with the truth? And number three, are you ready to cross over to the new? You know, when you move, it brings about momentum of purpose. Are you going in the direction of towards instead of going back to, the, to what was called the normal? It takes us standing still to move towards. In other words, we need to stand still to reflect. And a bit like Joshua and the Israelites, you know, they sent the leaders out to, uh, to tell the Israelites that they are to wait and look and be ready to go, to follow. Um, and they had to follow the ark. And, uh, and that was sort of a representation of the, the truth of his word, the presence of God, all these things that we need to move forward. But first off, you have to wait. You have to be still. So are you being still so that you're ready to move forward? So if we keep the word ahead of us and the truth in our hearts and we move to the truths and the, and the calling that God has placed on us. In Joshua 3, 5, Joshua told his people, consecrate yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. The Lord will do amazing things among you. I'm wondering if, if we are missing out on those amazing things. And I would like to ask you to think about those three points. I'd, I'd ask you to think about what does it mean you know, to, to be ready to receive what God has for us. You know, all the barriers are coming down now. With the, the, um, we're, we're getting less and less restrictions and we're being able to open up shops and, uh, and we'll be able to mix more with people. Do you know what? I believe that God is saying to us, he is about to do amazing things. He's about to do amazing things in your family. He's about to do amazing things in your community. He's about to do amazing things in your nation. And he's about to do amazing things in you. So, as I come to this time of reflection and prayer, I just like to call out to all those that are, are struggling, that Lord... I want to pray for you guys, for those that are stuck in the trap of materialism, of power and pride. Those three hooks that hook into you, that really, really stop you from fulfilling the purpose that God has for you in your life. So, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would release a us from the hooks of those things lord help us to turn to you and be the witness that you're asking us to be lord i pray for the release of those hooks now in the lives of those that are entrapped in the influence of those three things amen and for those that are waiting for God to move, but he is waiting for us to follow. You know, uh, in my experience with Christians and, uh, and in the faith, I just um, believe that I see so many people 
haven't been empowered to follow the call of God. And yet, he's just waiting for us to respond. The thing is, is are you going to believe what man says or are you going to believe who God says you are? So I just want to pray for you guys. Lord, I just pray that you, that for those that have felt that they're just sitting and waiting, expecting to see it happen. Lord, I just pray that you would release in them a spirit of adventure, a spirit of journeying, and, 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 and to apply that to their lives. Not to believe the lies of those that have told them that they cannot do because they're not capable of doing from their opinion, from the opinion of man. But Lord, I just pray that they hear you speaking to them and that they get empowered and released to share what they have because what they have has been given from you. And we thank you, Lord, for all the work you're doing. And finally, for those that, have, that are starting out to follow but are finding it hard to spend time with God, I pray that you will be released from the, from the, the attitude and the mindsets that are holding you captive and that you will find it easier to trust God in this time, to wait upon him, to, to come close to others and to share your heart. Because when we come close together and we fellowship, it brings about encouragement and we sharpen each other up. So I just wanted to, to pray for them and thank, them, thank God for all those people that he's working in. And finally, for those that don't know him, I pray that you will come into a uh, experience with him that is like no other. You will never find a relationship that is beyond the relationship that you have with Jesus. So I, I ask you to just pour out your heart to him and trust him because he is the only one when we come to it that we really, really, truly can trust. If that's you today, just follow me in this prayer. Lord, I call out to you. I pour my heart out for you. I believe in you. I believe that what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago was for me. And I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. And that I will turn to you and I will be your witness today, tomorrow, and for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, now we're going to go into a Zoom meeting where we're going to chat over some of the things. Um, but just before that, um, we're just going to finish off with a worship song.